Today, I will be unboxing four types of chocolate made by Melbourne Bush Food. If you don't know, I am a writer and my best known trilogy is a steampunk fantasy trilogy set in Australia. So as part of my research for that, I looked into some history, um, learnt a lot of what I was taught in school is incorrect, and looked into some Australian native foods, which are delicious. Now, you probably know about macadamias, uh, which are the greatest nut in the world. Uh, you might have heard of lemon myrtle or uh, bush tomatoes, bush plums, a few other things, kangaroo meat. Um, but apparently there are as many as 5,000 foods native to Australia. Oh, witchy grubs. You've heard of witchy grubs, but probably not tried them. Um, so there are about 5,000 Australian native foods that various uh, Aboriginal nations were eating before European people came. Shout out to the traditional owners of the land in Australia who've done an amazing job of keeping it so many bush foods alive and continuing to eat them and to pass down knowledge about preparation and so forth with no encouragement. Thank you so much. A huge amount of knowledge was lost but also huge amounts of land were destroyed by Europeans, particularly by European sheep. Um, Australia's uh, desert was actually quite fruitful before Europeans came and a whole lot smaller. These various plants are often extremely delicious and they tend to grow very well in Australia uh, because that's what they are, is Australian. So obviously I want to encourage the current somewhat hippie-led resurgence of Australian bush food. Uh, if possible, I would like to buy from actual Aboriginal people Aboriginal people make up less than 3% of the Australian population so it's not always possible to find an Aboriginal provider uh, and they own less than 2% of bush food businesses so the people who are making money of Aboriginal heritage are mostly the descendants of the people that destroyed large amounts of bush food so obviously that's a bit messed up this company I didn't dig deep enough to know what they're doing in practice, but they're very open about the fact that Aboriginal people deserve to make a profit off bush food and that they are attempting to uh, be decent human beings in that respect. So let's take a look. Chocolate through the post. It's got to be beautifully packaged, otherwise bad things happen. This is a card detailing some of the social work that they do. So let's get to the chocolate. I packed it with a cold gel pack, which is still cold. Hmm. That's really impressive. So, these are the four types of chocolate from their sample pack. 80% dark chocolate Davidson Plum. Lemon Myrtle dark chocolate with 71% cacao. Salted macadamia caramel chocolate. Obviously gonna be a favorite. And wattle seed crunch. Now I've had a uh, wattle seed before and I found it had a kind of mocha flavor. Now I hate coffee, so I wasn't super keen on it. Let's see how they go. I imagine they'll bring out the chocolatey flavors. It's 
very pretty with hexagonal shapes and a visible <laughs> flavor on the back there. Now, if you've never been to Australia, you probably still know if you're anything like me, but Australia has really good chocolate. So I look forward to seeing if they are up to Australian standards, which I suspect they are based purely on the price, which is enormous. Well, they're not kidding about the crunch. Those visible seeds on the back are pretty hardcore. We can definitely taste the wattle seed, and yes, it tastes like wattle seed, which is that that beautiful mocha, which people who like coffee, or particularly mochas, uh, will absolutely die for. It's still pretty good, even though I despise coffee in all its forms. And the chocolate is excellent. It's really good stuff. Okay. Salted macadamia and caramel chocolate. This is definitely going to be a crowd pleaser, I think. Again, you've got that. Ooh! <laughs> uh, you've got this beautiful hexagonal shape. I'll take it out of the packet so you can actually see it properly. Because it's quite lovely. So, one of my various excuses for buying this. Um, pack of chocolate <laughs> was that it's near Christmas so I might give it to someone as a gift which clearly is not happening so it's got this beautiful hexagonal they all do and then on the back hello macadamia I guess I'll eat it this way up so they don't fall off oh man mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good that's really good wow Definitely salted caramel chocolate. It's quite strongly salted, which is kind of good because it makes you take small bites instead of just chowing down the whole thing. Mm. I'm take one more bite. Mm. That's proper gourmet chocolate, that is. In many ways, this, the lemon myrtle, is the one I'm most excited about because <laughs> ever since I first got into lemon myrtle, I have been using it in my cooking. I like to mix it with um, oil and salt and usually basil and put it over my roast potatoes. I eat a lot of potatoes. Okay, now this is one of the dark ones. Ooh. It looks so pretty when they put the flavouring on the outside, I love it. So again, that beautiful um, hexagonal shape. Enjoy the play of light across the surface. And there's your lemon myrtle. That is basically what lemon myrtle looks like. kind of stages with this one. Now, I'm not usually into dark chocolate. Um, the one I have is the Lint brand Orange Intense because the little pieces of orange and slivers of almonds uh, give it that sort of ameliorate the taste so it's still delicious but not so overwhelming. This one is overwhelming but you get these kind of stages of flavors where you get that um, Herby lemon myrtle, 
and then you get it combined with the chocolate and then the chocolate taste gets deeper and deeper. So if you love dark chocolate, you're going to love this. It's great. I would not have thought of putting lemon myrtle in chocolate, but clearly I should have. Last but not least, probably, Davidson Plum. Now, I assume Davidson Plum is the same as Bush Plums. In any case, I've never tried them before. It is sad but helpful that we have to give, ooh, <laughs> give names like bush plum to something instead of just using its own name. But like I said, helpful. So I have kind of some idea of what I'm in for. Okay, look at this. Can you see the flecks of red? Bam! That is the stuff. Oh my goodness. It's really tart. Definitely does taste like plum. Mm. And then like the lemon myrtle, it kind of mixes with the chocolate taste and then the chocolate slowly takes over. Mm. Oh, it's still got the tartness in my mouth. It's um, It's great. probably almost too tart. It's funny that lemon myrtle isn't tart at all, but the bush plum is. Let me see if I can gain any further insights from a second bite. Mm. <laughs> it's almost like when you eat chili and you're like, oh, that's not that hot. And then the fullness of the flavor kicks in and you're like, ah! It's like that with the tartness. Mm. And that color, my goodness, take another look. It's not like purse your lips tart, but that there's definitely a, a sweet sourness to it. I'm trying to think of an equivalent. Maybe sour cherries? Yeah, if you like your sour cherries and you imagine that mixed with dark chocolate, mm, 